Check it out. Celebrating 1,001 followers on Twitch. Awesome. What's up, everybody? Day 197, make it song, bringer. You can tell I haven't been doing my homework lately. Look at all these things on my desktop. Um, today, I'll be working on color swatches. So the um, what I've been doing this weekend is making... Um, Different, playing around with different colors, right? I want to be able to have areas that have lots of grass um, and areas that have sand, areas that are just mountainous and rocky, stuff like that. So one of the cool things I got added so far, yo, what's up, Peter? Peter? <laughs> I'm here to help. I'm here to help. What's up, Jonah19? Welcome, you guys. So I'm just talking about um, the new color system. If I go and I change, for example, now we've got things set up so that it's kind of really organized. What's up, Canada? Um, so each area now has five different kinds of colors. There's a color for dirt, color for grass, color for rocks, color for plants, and for water. So then it takes all these colors and actually procedurally colors everything and uses these values. So eventually I'll put these into an actual text data file. But for now, I'm just throwing it here in this function called get colors. Um, nice, right on. Yeah, I'm tr like, like I say every time, I, I try and stream as early as I can now. But um, yeah, one of these days I will stream even earlier than this. I always intend to be streaming earlier. But um, it always works out to be like about now. So, yeah, check this out. If I change the color, right, of the plants away from white, it will actually shift the hue. So, this is different than shifting just or tinting the color. That in OpenGL you can tint the color of any vertex, and that will give you a a tinted version of a sprite. But this is actually hue shifted. So this takes all of the hues for the sprite that I've drawn and shifts them all. So you notice the brown of the t of this tree turned into sort of a purple, and the green of the the leaves turned into sort of a muddier green brown, and then these yellowish leaves here turned into super red. So and then if I change it, you know, some, to something even else, like I don't know, let's just experiment a little. It's going to shift to some other hue. <clears throat> so my goal today is to take these hues and find some color swatches that are really going to work all together. So there's something kind of weird, right? It turned the, it turned the bushes to blue. Yeah, so the first thing I want to do with this, since this is just a hue shift right here, I want to I want to find out what the current color is overall for um, for plants, and then apply some somewhat of an offset to those. What's up, Vlad? Good day. Welcome to the stream. <laughs> exactly. Nothing is weird at all. This is this is what's so cool about all this is that now. I could truly create alien planets with this hue shift thing. It's all done with the shader. Okay, so the actual color of plants in general, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this color here as a base. It's 738864. I want to see what that is. In HSV. Yeah, totally. That's the goal. We've got dimensions here.
Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Once again, way to go, Vlad. <laughs> yeah. So let's say I were to put this actually let's Yeah, try to use this as the color. I want that to come out as basically white so that it doesn't even doesn't even affect the color. So that's my goal for you, this little thing. Then I can go and actually change this to actually red and it will apply enough shift to get it to be red. There we go. So yeah, we got a base color now. Each one of these that I'm passing into the shader, I want to mod by one. And so I'm going to take the base hue. Now I want to take the regular hue minus the base. Oh, and then oh wait, saturation. I want to divide. What's up, Eglof? What up, man? I'm working on colors right now. Let me show you what I mean. Let's see if this actually worked. Yeah, Canada, there's going to be mods, I'm pretty sure. I'm leaving this game to be really, really hackable, so people will be able to go and make their own mods pretty easily, and perhaps even sell their own mods. So these trees have been desaturated a lot. I wonder why I did that. Hmm. Oh yeah, Ludum Dare goes by quick. Gosh, man, everybody's all done with their projects already. Yeah, so Ekloff, the the goal today is to do is I'm working on. Whoops, sorry, I reset this, the chat stream again or the chat window. Um, so the goal today is to is to play with color swatches. So I've got the ground color a certain color right now. Um, the mountains have their own color. Dirt has its own color. And in this screen, these lighter patches of green are actually dirt. No, actually, these patches of green are grass. And then there's this darker green is dirt. So every area has that. And as I go up to the mountains, I can have a totally different color swatch. But what I'm playing with right now is the trees and the bushes. The trees and the bushes are different because I actually want to hue shift them because they have their all their own hues inside them. There's brown inside the trees, there's green inside the trees, there's yellows. So I'm making a little method that actually shifts the hue of them all. I know, it's pretty fast, right? What's up, Arcane? I think some of them start with some existing code already. Um, but I don't know. I mean, when you get really fast at making games, especially quick, small games, and you probably you probably already have a template project, I would think. But some of them start from scratch, I think.
Oh, yeah. So this is the part where it really needs some some love right here. The hue, the current hue dot saturation needs to be divided by the base's saturation. So the, if the base saturation is something like lower, like 0.5, and the hue is something higher, like one, then we get a we get a multiplier of two. Yeah, we want that for both that and that. Okay, so that should help. What's up, Boogie? Yeah, yeah, eventually this is gonna look good. Nice, right on. That's a good idea. A little mod section or something. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so now we've got the regular color of what we started with, right? So I should now be able to actually plug in an exact color value and get some trees that look like that. Nice, man. Wish I could see this a little bigger. But it looks like it... Alex, I get your feeling, man. Big old boss, side-scrolling shooter type. Defuxel, do I think I could create a game that would make me millions? This is a good question. Um, I'm going to give you kind of a deeper answer because uh, this is one of the greatest lessons I've learned in my 20 years of game development, especially with my last video game. Um, is I've learned that all expectations are limitations, at least in my opinion. So when I when I if I were to create an expectation like oh my god I'm gonna make millions from this game, first of all you're setting yourself up to be completely shattered if you don't hit that goal right because that's more than likely. Second of all, the thing is if you allow yourself to actually just not have expectations, you can actually get better results because you let your you let your higher mind your heart guide you towards things. And that can sometimes bring results that you never ever could have imagined. So sorry, sorry that I don't have an easy answer for you there. Oh, no worries. Yeah, I love the character in it. It's so great. Okay, so let's try that out. Actually shifting to a different hue color. In fact, I think I want to take the base color and shift its brightness all the way up. So we got 212, 255, 185. Just to make this easier to reference. So if I want to take like a red color, I can easily just shift the brightness all the way to the maximum and then put, put that in there. Yeah, cool. So we still got the Still got the same hue. Nice. What's up, Grim Gary? Okay, so let's shift this hue and play around with it. So if I let's say, let's say I want some red trees. That would be 255, 189, 189. <laughs> That's right, man. I've been to Home Depot. I've been there all day. I've been working on, I've been like painting up little boards, bringing them home, shirt, sure, like holding them against the wall to make sure it's going to match the right color. Everything's going to be awesome. This is going to be the best house ever built. Okay, that didn't work. 
I wanted that to be red. So I wonder why it didn't turn out red. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, so if I have a hue of red, red is, let's see what's actually it's setting right here color in the base. Canada, yeah, maybe. That'd be cool. What's up, Bazarus? Yeah, totally. Jonah19. Ideas are super duper cheap. It's true. But what take what what creates what creates value is taking ideas and making them reality. So many people have ideas. I learned this a long time ago because I had so many friends that had all these great ideas for video games or whatever, and they said they were going to do them. Or they had ideas for movies they wanted to make when they never did them. And all these things. You know, everybody can have an idea, but it's the per it's the people that actually do them that put forth the effort. It takes it take the years to write a movie, take the years to to make a game. Those are the people that create value, and that's why people make millions of dollars. It's not just their ideas. <laughs> nice one. Yeah. Okay. Well, okay, this one, I don't need that breakpoint. I want, I want this breakpoint right here. So the base and the hue. Oh, his base came out to be negative. Oh, it's so weird. What's up, Cobile? Welcome, welcome. All right, I do believe this this hue is just super wrong. Why is it? Why is it like that? This is hue 97. Should be giving me a hue of about 97, which would be 97 over 360. 0.269. But it's not. It's base 212. One fifty five, one eighty five. Is that right? Okay, that's giving me a th hue of three twenty eight. Oh, maybe I just forgot to change this base, or change it to the wrong thing. Let's try this again. I want a brightness all the way up. So it's two twelve, two fifty five, one eighty five. What? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I think I think that really the thing to if you're starting a video game or whatever, you just want to focus on one idea, you know? Something unique or what or not even unique, it doesn't even have to be unique. It just has to be an idea that you really want to do. And if you start that idea and you see it all the way through, that will be awesome. It will you will do something cool, <laughs> basically. Go by all, um no, I do not always code while standing. Sometimes um 
Sometimes I do sports while I'm standing. Sometimes I talk while I'm standing. <laughs> I'm joking. But no, I actually sit down and code as well. Yeah. But I pretty much, I, whenever I stream, I do stand. And for a few other times during the day, I'll stand. Okay, so here's the part that's really, really got me. Because this base, this color is 212, 155, 185. Oh, 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 255. Okay, let's try that again. <laughs> God. Yeah. Oh man, see this this illustrates one of the the primary problems that most people have, you know, is is this is this thing where you get these ideas in your head and you stop doing the the idea you already had, you know? Which kind of makes me think of Chicken Sword, an awesome looking game, but it's completely changed from when it started. You know, he started out making a platformer game, and it was awesome. It looked like a rad platformer game, and I was excited to play it. But now it's turning into a roguelike, and still looks awesome. But I'm I'm saying this probably cost him six to eight months, you know? Maybe. I guess that's a total guess, but... Anyways, Chicken Sword, great game. But who knows how long it'll take. What's up, Skittle Fiddler? <laughs> yes. That's why I have to stand. Okay, so we've got a base, a point. Let's see what happens if I just run this. Okay, cool. There. We've got some sort of reddish trees. Um, let's say we wanted some... Bluish trees. 185, 192.55. This is going to have to be more subtle, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I mean, it's, I don't think it's looking good yet, but I think if, if it's subtle, right? If I do it in a more of a subtle way, I think it'll really help help some areas. And what I have to do is I have to change everything, right? If these are going to be blue trees, I need to have some weird colored ground that matches that. Same with the rocks. So... So okay, yeah, I'm gonna go back to turning off this for now because this is good. I like the existing plants as they are. So I'm gonna set this back to white. Um, and the next thing I'm really gonna wanna do is focus on the water, the water texture or the water. I want it to be able to be different colors too. It's just And water is gonna be easy because I can actually make all the water white and then just color it easily, just tint it. Okay, so I'm going to start with that. Um, Jonah 1.9, they will be randomized, but they will be randomized from swatches. So I'm actually going to put together a bunch, like a like a, a data file, which has all the different color swatches that I would I would think would work, that look good, right? And then it will randomly select from one of those swatches. And so, and this is going to change everything, right? It's not just, um, like, here's the current world I'm in. This world's called Dingle. Um, and each one of the areas can have totally different um, styles. Even though I've got them, I've got these overworld areas as bright green here or dark green. This could be yellow, you know. These could be whatever. But in general, these brighter green ones are supposed to be sort of like forest or lush areas. 
these darker ones are supposed to be darker, more dead trees, that kind of thing, maybe. Um, this is supposed to be sort of a sandy area, and these are like the mountainous areas. But like I said, if a certain world could maybe have that everything flipped or different or something weird. Oh, no. <laughs> nice. All right, so yeah, let's do this with the water. We want, I want to get the existing water and make it white to start with. I think it's just called water. Yeah, water and water too. Nice. Hello, the Dr. Codes. What's up? Welcome to the stream, man. Okay, so uh, I'm going to need to record whatever hue this is. Actually, let's give it a, actually a color. The brightest one will help. Um, and I think I want to amp the brightness all the way to the top with that. Yeah. 139, 214, 255. All right, 139, 214, 255. Cool, so that's what the watercolor is gonna be. Yes, I do, I have two big tips for you. First of all, go find a game engine. Um, get Find a game engine you like to use, start learning it. Do some tutorials with it. Get used to it because that is that is what takes a lot of time is getting familiar with an engine. Like if you if you're wondering how to how to display a single pixel or you're wondering how to change the color of a pixel or you're you know all these little things you got to learn and get used to those basic things, right? So find a game engine and and the one that you like, a game engine you like and keep doing tutorials until you feel that you're pretty familiar with it. Then you can start actually developing a game. Um, and I was I would recommend starting with the simple game. Start with the, something that you feel you can complete in a weekend, sort of like a Ludum Dare type thing. And then third, my third piece of advice is follow your heart. Do the things that excite you, because a lot of the times you'll run into you'll run into barriers where you're like, man, I'm not excited about this part. This part's boring. Don't force yourself to go through those parts at that point. Take a rest with it. Take a break from that thing that you're bored with, and go back to what excites you, because. Game development, first of all, should be fun, and second of all, you're never going to finish anything if you're not excited about it. Usually people don't, and, and um, most people. And um, and I find that following your heart t tends to guide you to, um, to completing things in a way that you never thought you could have imagined was so awesome. So uh, One day I'm going to write a blog post about this, because I answer this question so many times every day but uh, and I and I answer it differently every time a little bit so I really need to kind of write a blog post about that and I will do that at some point skill fiddler what language should you begin to learn C++ or JavaScript um, what kind of games do you want to make yeah that's a, that's something too yeah that's a good way to do it, I would think. Learning how to mod. <laughs> yes, totally. <laughs> this is all I need to say whenever anyone asks about how to start game development. Seriously, that's the best advice I could possibly give you. I've been a game developer for 20 years. I couldn't give any better advice than that. That sums it all up right there. Totally. I gotta keep I gotta keep a link to this. I don't need to write a blog post anymore. Screw it. Alright, so we'll just add a little hue saturation layer on top of all this to make it desaturated. And save for web. Oh, 
Okay, now we got water two. I don't want the slices visible. All right, same thing, saving this one for the web. It's all gray now, so we can color it when we get into the code. That's right, exactly. That's why I don't write blog posts that much. I got, I'm already so busy making this game. Yes, yes it is. I think you meant Ludum Dare, right? Yeah. Probably autocorrect here, but yeah, Ludum Dare is going on. I think it, sh it shuts down. You can see on their website, man, ludumdare.com. Jam ends in an hour 28. There's only an hour and 28 minutes left to get your game done for Ludum Dare, everybody. People that are doing Ludum Dare are not watching this stream though right now. If you, <laughs> unless you, I don't know, but you'd be so good at multitasking if you could write a game and watch this. Uh, you want to make a 2D pixelated fighting and adventure game, side-scroller. Okay, what platforms do you want to release it on? Okay, so now we should have gray water. <laughs> no, nice, right on, Azarus. I believe it. Cool, we got gray water. Now let's turn it into some color. That looks cool, gray water, actually. Dude, I'm definitely gonna have some areas with gray water. Ekloff, my first game was Breakout Ripoff. Dude, one of my first games was too. Yeah. Yeah, cool, dude, that's awesome. Yes, it's so great to see games done really well, you know what I mean? Even if it's a very, very, very simple game, maybe even a game you only play for five minutes or something really short, is if it's really well done, you can tell. It's got polish, it's got fun, it's got its, its menu done and all little things that make it a game finished and complete. I love seeing that. And this is a multi-asking game? That's right. Nice, Pong. Bam. You're the original author of Pong? Oh, I've been wanting to meet you. Okay. So what, what platforms do you want to release it on? That's my, my question. Yeah. Okay, so now I'm gonna go where it creates water. I think it's just create water tile. And we're gonna procedurally, well, not procedurally, but like just tint the color. So render component has a color. We can go colors, K okay, color, water. This is so cool having this array of colors now to use. So much more organized. I used to just have a single color and a color complement. Now, each area has all these different colors it can use for tinting stuff. Uh, Jonah, no, I wasn't planning on the, the monsters being affected by the hue shifts. I just wanted the whole area to look like it was changed. So the, the heroes, Jib, the monsters, all the NPCs, all of them, I, I really want them to be bespoke elements, very handcrafted things. So the colors, even the, even the colors for Rock, the main character, I want all those to stay the same. So um, it's really just shifting the world around and leaving all the characters the same. So just PC? I don't know, I mean, I guess, I guess if I were you, I would look around at different engines that would suit your needs. And I would especially look at Game Maker and Unity. 
Um, unless you just really want to learn code. If you want to learn C++, I think it's the best language you could possibly learn to learn myself. Um, but yeah, you just, I'd say go try out engines until you find one. You're like, this is the one. I love this. I love this engine. And then just learn whatever language it uses. Thanks, Coin54. What about Kratu? The Kratu? Oh yeah, the Kratu enemy will be colored with the color of the rocks. So I've got like four, five different color types per area. Dirt, grass, rock, plant, water. Kratu is always colored by the rock color. So he matches that. So the actual, I don't know what he's going to look like in certain areas. It's a good point. Really good point, actually. i got to think about that. Well, there you go. Nice. Okay, cool. Nice. Your first game was for Samsung Microwave Game System? I've never heard of that. Are you joking with me? Bam! There we go. We got blue water. Um, let's see what happens if we have yellow water. Two fifty four, two fifty five, one thirty nine. Save that there. Two fifty, was it two fifty four? Two fifty five, one thirty nine. See what that looks like. Nice, man. Cool. Whoa, it looks crazy. Yellow waters. A giant peat in all the water. Oh, nasty. Man, changing the water color is really, really changes a lot. This is like some weird world. Like if I, I made the ground red. Oh, look at that. Oh, I gotta, I gotta mess with these bridge sprites so they're not actually drawing water underneath them. <laughs> nice man the great thing about unity is it's so easy to publish to different pro platforms <laughs> uh, so I'm thinking actually this color should be a little more blue or a little more greenish so let's start with that. 139, 214, 255. Oh, 255. Why do I keep doing that? Okay, so if I go for more of a green, like that maybe. 139, 255, 248. I think this might complement the the tree colors a little bit better. Nice text adventure game, Commodore sixty four. Right on. What happened here? Got like a random crash. In GDB image notifier. Looks like a. I don't know. <clears throat> Looks like a debugging issue to me. Ooh. Ooh. I don't know. I don't know if I even like it that green. It looks more sea-like, that's for sure. Like it's the ocean.
I think there's a, a lake up here. I want to see how this lake looks. Oops. So here's some areas that were kind of like the old ones or the old color scheme. This brown dirt. Oh yeah, it changed the color of the water. Oh, that would be really weird if you. Ch oh yeah, see that's kind of weird, right? It changes the color of the water as it goes from this area to that area. You need to blend those somehow. But actually, it kind of does look good with this greenish water. I guess. What's up, Naceros? Thank you, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, I know that feeling. Yeah, that's what I left college for. It's like, man, there's no girls in my school. I'm leaving. Never came back. Let's try a little less green. There, sort of a compromise. 139, try it even more green. Any reason why the screen doesn't follow the character? Oh, you mean like it scrolls? Yeah, yeah. I'm purposely making a game like Zelda 1. Uh, Coin54. Um, have you played The Legend of Zelda? The original Legend of Zelda? There's no scrolling whatsoever. As you get to the edge of the screen, it scrolls, and there's always one area. So um, it's in homage to Zelda 1. I wanted to make, when I first started this game, I'm like, well, should there be scrolling? Should there not be scrolling? Every other game has scrolling. Shouldn't I put scrolling in? And then I was like, finally, like, nope, no. I'm gonna make, I wanna make an old school game that has no scrolling whatsoever. No, not Link to the Past. No. Legend of Zelda, the first one. Link to the Past was the third one. And Link to the Past had scrolling still. Yeah, no. You guys, are, you guys, what? You guys don't know your Zeldas. Link to the Past has scrolling. Let's see if we can see some videos. Here, look. The map. There's a lot of these areas that you can walk for a ways until you get to a new area. I mean, it does do that thing where you where you move from area to area, but it's not like Legend of Zelda where it actually had single areas that you could go to. Anyways. Why am I standing? Because it's good for my spine, man. What's up? What's up, y'all? Parties, parts Poe, Terry Ball Sacks. <laughs> uh, and no, I'm not using a stand-up desk. This is just a closet, it's a makeshift standing desk. I just put my computer at the top here and then I put my keyboard on some boxes. And this is my standing setup. You don't need to go buy some expensive standing desk. Those Vari desks or whatever, they're like, they're a lot of money. A lot of money I don't have. I know, right? It's so sad. That's why I want to bring it back, because it's my favorite Zelda ever. It's, uh, but why? You were like, why, 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 why? Oh, here's why. When I was coding for a long time, I've been a coder for 20 years, and what happens is you tend to start going doing this with your neck, right? When you, when you sit down and code, 
typically your screen is down from you and your neck goes like this. You get to like, you know, this is kind of an extreme, right? But what happens is over time, your, your spine is supposed to curve this way. And over time, you start coding like this for long enough, even just a little bit, even if you're just barely like looking down, that actually bends your spine. And eventually you will have the neck of a 70 year old man at age 25, like me. I'm 35 now and I've, I've fixed this problem by going to traction. It took six months of going to traction, having a chiropractor like hold my neck back, putting weights on my head and all that to bend my spine back slowly back to normal. That's how much I used to code looking down like this. So f never again will I ever code like that. Even when I sit down, even when I sit down, I use this right here. I, I sit on a drum throne and then my computer sits way up high. So my, my eye level is right here and I actually look straight at the screen so it doesn't mess up my spine. That's why. <laughs> exactly. Nice. Nice. There you go. Arms. Right. That's a great idea. Yes, it does. Good job, man. Good job. Uh, gas, no, they don't because I don't stand all day. I sit down as well. Like I just showed you, I have a seat. I stand and sit. Sit and stand. I go back and forth. So let's try a really green color. 164, 255, 139. Why do I not have enough money? Oh man. There's definitely a um, a meatly you need to see. Jonah one nine, I need the meatly. It explains why game developers don't make a lot of money. That looks so weird. This looks like poison water. Ah, oh, it's definitely really interesting seeing different colored waters. I love it. But yeah, I'm going to go back to the original, well, sort of the original shifted a little bit. Let's try that shift again. Yeah. Thanks, Jonah. You get it now. <sighs> okay, so I want to start a desert tile now. This is actually pretty good. Well, let's see. Hmm. Yeah, I think I might go back to the original watercolor for that. Let's see what this looks like back at the original. Yeah, that's pretty good. I like that. It's a good compliment having that bluer water. What's up, baby? Okay. <clears throat> Can I make blue water with green bits? No, I can't actually. 
the way I did it is um, I'm using gray for the water and I'm procedurally coloring it by applying a tint. So I can't actually hue shift. I can't do multiple different colors. Thanks. Okay, so let me go to a different area. I'm going to turn on God mode this time and run to somewhere. I'm going to run over to the the area that's sand. So the sandy area is way over at 1, 3 to start with. <laughs> oh. Hmm. This water is a little bit different though. It's like not quite as bright. This is one, two. Right? No, yeah, this is one, two. Here's one, three. Is that right? Zero, one, two, oh, two and three. Both of these are supposed to be desert. Okay, so I'm gonna play around with um, some different color schemes for this deserty area. <laughs> I was in God mode there. Let me show you, man. Um, Look, this is what scrolling's like normally. See, nice and smooth. And besides, you're seeing it, it's at 30 frames a second because I am streaming. So because my my computer is doing a processing all the data for the live stream, I can only run the game at 30 frames a second. But the game actually runs itself at 60 frames a second by default. So. Okay, so I'm going to start a color scheme for the sand. Nice, right on. Okay, so starting this out, I don't ever want to see trees. So there's this other function here in area. Uh, where it actually applies styles. So sand. We're going to do rocks. Oh, yeah, I guess this is exactly the same as this one for now. So that should make it so. Uh, I want to get rid of these trees. We'll see. Nice, right on. Huh, I wonder why it's still drawing the trees. That was a better area to be in actually. Let's do start there. We'll start with the 
messing with this color scheme and then I'll figure out why the trees aren't working there or it's like not getting rid of the trees. So the dirt, I want to start with this dirt color, 255, 189, 97. All right, so it's kind of like an orangish color. I'm gonna shift to just a straight up yellow. 255, 253, 97. Yes, yeah, you're on to me. You're on to me, Jonah. Yeah, I, mean, I was originally intending for the desert area to be the place where you first find the cactus. Yeah, so what's up, man? All this information's right here, right there on the FAQ. Just click the info for this stream. The game's gonna be released sometime between January and March. <clears throat> Ooh, so ugly. Why did it turn so yellow? Ugh. Uh, King Nothing, I, I don't know. Yeah, I hadn't thought about that, but I guess I'll add that to the ideas list because that's cool. I like that. Character sensitive to terrain. Uh, Terry Ballsacks, if you really want to, there's Songbringer to pre order, man. If you're not joking. But yeah, there's Songbringer.com pre order. You can pre-order the game, and what's great about pre-ordering the game is you actually get your name in the credits. So on the main menu, it shows you um, everyone who's backed the game already on Kickstarter, and everyone who pre-orders the game also gets their name on the main menu. So if I go back to the main menu, you can see what I'm talking about. The main menu of the game, it thanks every one of the backers randomly. So by pre-ordering the game now, instead of ordering it when it comes out, you actually get your name there in the credits right there on the main menu. So all these are awesome backers. Once again, thank you backers. Thank you for the people that have actually funded this game. Without you, I would not be able to do this game full time. I wouldn't be able to continue doing it full time. So it would be nowhere near as done as it is now. It probably wouldn't ever get done, I imagine. So yeah, there's that's that link if you want. Nice, yeah, right on. Cool. I'm looking at the books you're reading. What's this book that's got turned around here? Yeah, totally nice. Totally works. It's suds. Logical operators in C++ are like this, man. If, this, and that. Logical or is that. <laughs> I don't know, as there is, that's a really good question. I don't know if everything's going to be explained or not. Names should be random seeds? What do you mean by names should be random seeds? Oh, you mean people's names should be random seeds of the game? I don't know how that would work. I mean, I guess you could just put your own name in, and you're going to get your own world anyway. Yeah, you guys saw your own name? Yes, right on. Thank you. Thanks for backing the game again, man. Uh, gas, yeah, there's going to be a cheat. Um, the idea is to have a cheat um, cave. So if you find the cave in the game, it's like a game genie. So inside this cave, there's a genie. You go talk to him, and he's like, what's your code? You enter in your code, and you can change the world. So enter god mode or whatever. So yeah, it's, it's not really cheat codes. It's real more like a cheat cave. 
Nice, you guys, everyone has those speakers. Uh, really? No way. Oh, that's awesome. Is that true? Let's see. Because I'm using C14. Oh my god, that's so dope! You can! Oh, god bless you, C14! Oh, so rad! Thanks for teaching me something new, Azarus. Ah, well, I guess I haven't read it then. Dude, that's sweet! Oh! Oh, oh, oh! So in the in the sand, we want even the grass to be sandy colored so that it doesn't even cover sand with anything. <laughs> right? One step closer to Python. No, it's true. Python has always been more readable. I love how Python, you don't even have to put the, the braces. Okay, so that looks a little better, but it's still not sandy enough. Then it has bushes and stuff. We don't want bushes. Hmm. Let's go for a little more sandy. <laughs> yes, yes, it did. Two twenty ninety seven. Next thing will be mountains. The mountains are a really big area, so there, that's looking a little more sandy-ish. Yeah, I like that. We were entering into some mountainous area. We were back in the sand. Let's go for kind of a sandstone rock color as well. Let's start with just the sand we already have. Hell, let's even do the plants sandy. Whoa! That's what I'm talking about. That's a lot sandier. Look how we turn the, the trees even a weird color. Wow. Yeah, so I really need to work on this whole hue shifting the plants thing. I mean, I guess this area is not even going to have um, plants that much. And it should, really shouldn't have any water at all. This is supposed to be the desert. In fact, I can, I can easily turn off water. So area patterns, add water. Area pods on Z is not equal to zero. Or, oh, right? Or, um, area style equals K style sand. Don't add water. How many color swatches are, am I planning to have? Yeah, it's gonna be pretty much the same process as this. I mean, I still gotta, I can still gotta work out this whole plant thing, right? These plants, this hue shift for these plants is not quite right. But um, yeah, I don't know how many color swatches I'll have. Oh, that's kind of weird. As it as it turns from one area to another, it has to switch off its hue shader thing. Huh. 
Oh, I guess I could do some blending, right? So as I shift from one area to another, I can slowly turn off the hue shifting. That'll work. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not actually sure how many color swatches there will be. It'll depend, I guess, on... Yo, Steve Tramby! What's up? Tramby! Dude, how you been? Oasis. Maybe. I don't know. I don't I don't really want Oasis because it's such a small area of the game. Look, we only have like four screens total that are desert. And there's already so much water in the game. I'd rather have the desert focused on no water. Yeah, totally. There's tons of new stuff. Let me show you some cool stuff that's been added. I'm working on the colors right now, so don't don't mind those being kind of off, but there's the lightning sword. Let me show you that. So when you when you hit an enemy with the lightning sword, it um it strikes the enemy with lightning, but then it also strikes another place on the screen with lightning as well. So there's a chance you could actually get hit with your own lightning. So it's a cool item, but it's kind of dangerous. But I've actually never been hit by lightning so far. Yeah, there might be a scary volcano, Nanos. Right? Oh, yeah, the, the maps are so much better now. So, yeah, it kind of looks like the original Zelda. The original Zelda had two lakes next to each other, and the sand was over here. But everything pivots off of the mountain. So it first determines a mountain point, and then that determines where the sea is, right? So the mountains could be like here, and then if they, they're here, the sea will be down here, and they can shift like that. So everything pivots off the mountains. Um, and then it also, you know, reserves a, a bits of its paths. So you can actually create paths on the lakes. Can't create paths on the sea. So. Yeah, it's, um, it's just random and it's not, it is a very small AOE effect. So if it hits, it's only one tile wide where it hits the lightning. Um, another cool thing is the fire sword. Let me show you the fire sword. Fire sword is probably my favorite so far. So the fire sword actually creates a fire entity. Um, and it, you, enemies can be hit by that fire multiple times. You can also be hit by the fire too. So, once again, it's kind of a dangerous item, but it's actually very powerful as well. So, see there, that, that guy got hit twice by that fire. So, that's pretty cool. Um, there's also the Ice Sword. Ice Sword freezes enemies, like kind of like Me Metroid. My other favorite game. So, yeah, they stay frozen for a while, and then they thaw out. Oh! There's lots of new enemies too since you've been here last. Um, there's what else? So there's the fear sword and the ghost sword. The ghost sword is like the original one of these kind of items. How much of the game is going to be dynamic? Um, most of it is in the world creation. So like this, this part is really really dynamic. It just creates. Oh, it creates a whole world based on your world seed. So you enter six letters, like this world is Dingle, and those six letters are used to generate this whole world. And then as you get into actually playing the game, that a lot of that is going to kind of feel um, bespoke or handcrafted. So it's, it's sort of a blend of dynamic and a blend of handcrafted. Yes, world generation is procedural, not necessarily random, it's procedural. So there's algorithms, there's a whole like, um, there's a ton of algorithms that go into creating this procedural world. And these are just, um, this is just part of it right here. So in essence, it's, it's not just random numbers, it's a lot of pre-thought algorithms that go into creating areas that are meant to be fun, right? I've, I've made sure that lakes, for example, are far enough away from the sea so you create rivers. Deserts are far enough away from the lakes and the sea. The, the 
nice friendly forest is kind of near where you start it opens up certain areas around where you start as well too so so it's a blend is there going to be boats um probably not there's tell you could teleport in this game um so yeah let me show you some more items too there's so many more things that steve tranby has not seen there's the ghost sword let's see the ghost sword what's up double twitch um, yeah, you guys haven't even seen the, the levels yet. So that, this is the ghost sword. The ghost sword is just like the very first sword. And you have item crafting too. So everybody who's just like tuning into this stream, you, you've never seen this game before. Um, oh, first I got to kill the enemies on the screen to be able to use my teleporter. But you can actually teleport back to your ship. And at, back at your ship, you can um, you can craft items. Man, these guys are hard to kill because they just burrow. Where you at, you little bastards? Where's he? Oh, gotcha. All right, cool. I can use a teleporter now. So when you go and use your teleporter, you can fly back to your ship, right? You teleport back there, and you can take whatever items you've found in the world and combine them. So that's how you create the fire sword. The fire sword is a combination of the ghost sword and um, fire in a bottle. So you get all these items, you can craft them. Like let's say I want to craft my top hat with the helmet or whatever. That's not an actual combo yet. So yeah, it's not even working for me to show you. But yeah, so that's not a very good combo. He's like, he's not happy by that combo. But if you have a combo that works right here, this is where you craft your items and then you can go back into the world and use that new item. Will I be incorporating mods? No, I won't be. I won't be in essentially the one creating mods. I'm the one creating the original game. So, um, but there will be mods. When you die, when you die, you can continue again, just like in Zelda. But if you play permadeath mode, when you die, you're dead forever. So when you first start your game, you got a choice between permadeath and um, and regular mode so like if I'm gonna start a new game I could do regular mode or permadeath permadeath if I enter my world code or whatever whatever I, I choose then I whenever I whenever I die I can't continue that game um, and then also there's the fear sword so the fear sword is the complement to the the ghost sword in fact, let me let me put the player inside one of the levels so you guys can kind of see what that looks like too. There's so there's nine different levels, right? Just like Zelda. Um, and here's one world or one level. Some bad enemies. So the fear sword is exactly like the um, the ghost sword, except it's the opposite. Wait, did I get the ghost sword? Oh, I forgot to turn off the ghost sword. So you can only you can craft the ghost sword into the fire, ice, lightning sword, or the fear sword. So the fear sword is a combination of the ghost sword and fear, and it works off of your fear. So as you get see right now, I'm at full health, so um, I can just run around and um, I can't use my my ghost sword. But as I get lower with health, like this, if I start dying, then my fear sword kicks in. So now, see, I'm starting to shoot a little beam or whatever. So the Fear Sword gets stronger and stronger as you get weaker and weaker. So that's kind of a cool item. And in fact, I think I'm going to make it a little stronger than the Ghost Sword. So, But anyways, you get the point. There's bosses. There's big old bosses. There's... and But the, yeah, there's still so much left to do. There's four months of game development left till this is released. So, like I keep saying, I got a haul ass. So I'm going to go back to using the Fire Sword, it's like my favorite. And I got some more artwork to do with these swords anyways, like the fire, I want to be more like a fireball. 
Yes, yeah, Steve Tramey, I did. Uh, it's Suds. Yeah, your your robot is his name is Jib. He's actually a character in the game. And if you have a friend over and you want to play this game together, your friend can play as Jib the robot. So, um, and there's gonna be other characters in the game too. So yeah, Steve Tramey, I did move away from user default files and I published my um, published the system I created called Valtry. So if you want to check that out, here's the Valtry GitHub. Oh, oh, I like that. I like that, Jonah. That's a really cool idea. Seeing, yeah, I could totally do that at the very end of the of when you play a world. That'd be part of like the outro of the game, so it shows you the world you've just played. Sure. Yes, like exactly like the drain weapons in Final Fantasy. Yeah. What's up, Fum? Yeah, I'm novice. Long live Jib for for sure. He is, he's the longest, he's the oldest character in the game. He's like thousands of years old. Oh, yeah, yeah, Jason. Yeah, the reason I didn't go with Jason is because I'm using this for my behavior trees as well. And my behavior trees, the order matters. So I have to like, for example, the frog, I have to put my behavior trees in these files too. And I have to have that order come in correct. So that's why I created Bow Tree. And it's shorter than Jason, and I could be lazier than Jason. Oh, cool. Yeah, I know. Jib turns into Darth Vader. Yeah, it's like there's so many ideas that have yet to be done, yet to even be started. A lot of these will be things I'll I'll probably have to get done after the initial release, so they'll be free updates. Okay, so I want to go and create the rocks to be a little more, a little less yellow in this area. So 255, here's the yellow color, 220, 97. We'll take the saturation down, maybe 35, 34. So it's now 236, 169. Is Jason exhausting? Oh, that's why. That's why I wrote Valtry. I didn't want to. I didn't want to do any more braces and colons and quotes around everything. I know what you mean. It is kind of exhausting, especially the quotes. Where was I? Two two zero or two three zero? Hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah, that kind of looked weird. Let's set the plant life back to. Back to white. Um, the rocks, I think I want to try a different color, a different hue. Like maybe make them a little more reddish. 195, 169. Yeah, yeah, gas. The whole point of that is that you're actually going to be part of a leaderboard. So when you finish your game, um, it scores you based on how fast you finish the game. Oh, this red color looks crazy weird. Um, so it's, it scores you based on how fast you finish the game, how many secrets you uncovered, and a few other things. I forget what else is going into that. But the leaderboard is actually a global thing. It'll be shared on Steam um, and... So you're, when, you, when you've actually finished a game, you get to put in your name, and your name actually gets in the leaderboard based on that world seed you used. So certain world seeds are going to be popular, right? And then those, those world seeds can be speed ran, for example. Speed runners are going to get the top scores on those leaderboards. So 
Oh, Ronald Rowe, right. I forgot about that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, this this tone is really just not cool. I don't think that one is going to be either. Let's try a really complimentary... There, let's try it's that. 214, 169, 255. Whoa. <laughs> Where are we? Oh man. Okay, now these definitely need to be less saturated for sure. Yeah, I guess yellow was kind of a thing to go for. Two fifty five, two twenty nine, one ninety three. Yeah, cool. Yeah, it definitely is a speedrunner's dream. That's kind of what I wanted it to be when I started. Because one of my favorite things about Zelda ones is the speed runs these days. See there, that kind of looks okay. It's still, it's a bit too red though. Yeah, I want to actually go with the exact hue that it was. And it was that was the candy world for sure. Candy bringer, we got candy. What kind of candy was that? It was like one of those like chewy, like a laffy taffy. There. Okay, we want this, but way not saturated. And I wonder. Oh, see, I was I wasn't doing full on brightness either for the rocks. Oh, that'll help. <laughs> yeah, it does. Oh, not doing it, not doing it. Wait, we were getting approximately down to 150. There, 155. Ooh, the saturation needs to come up now. 155, 39, Why is the game called Songbringer? It's named after the ship. There's a spaceship called Songbringer. Uh, that's a little bit too dark. If you want to read more about the game and stuff, um, check out this the Kickstarter page. It kind of explains a lot more of it. There's a link here. Yeah, so there's a little bit of, of the plot and how it came to be and all that there. But this ship is actually called Songbringer. Um, and if you watch the video there too, it kind of shows the ship and all that. Okay, so that, that rock was way too dark. One ninety three, one seventy three, one hundred four. Ooh, my head is getting full of numbers now. I can hardly remember them. One seventy three. I wish I could just copy and paste. 
bite colors from Photoshop. Hmm. Now that is actually kind of close to what I was thinking. Okay, I can live with that. But the, the hue on the trees and all that, I need to definitely disable these trees and bushes. And go with like a more of a desert tile set. I think I'll save that for later. I'm gonna go do the mountain colors now. Have I used the app SIP? No. Is that for getting colors? Can you actually get binary colors? But so can it can this actually do bite colors like 255 255 because if not it's it's still not going to help me Yeah, I'm not seeing any screenshots where it's showing it's showing me floating point RGB values Hmm looks cool though Yo, what's up, T? Yeah, I played your game, man. Super good job, dude. Poogie, yeah, I do. It depends on what kind of programming language you want to learn, but there are some great websites for learning how to code. Um, I recommend Learn Code the Hard Way, even though I've never read this book. And code Adam Code Academy is great, yeah. So can this thing can this actually export as as bytes like 255? I mean, I guess I could just call, I could make a hex code reader. That's probably what I should do, huh? That would make all this so much easier. I would just go Copy the hex, paste it in, bam. In fact, let's just do that really quick. I'm so tired of copying all these numbers. My head's going crazy with numbers. Oh, click on the color, then click the RGB bit. Yeah, it's still just giving me an hex though. Did I did I click on the wrong thing though? Is there some other place to click RGB? Oh, I'm not seeing it. Yeah, man, I totally liked it. Good job. Click the color block on the right. Oh, this thing. Oh. Oh, nice. Okay. Yay! Yeah, thank you, Azimris, once again, coming through with a sweet solution. Oh, yeah. Right on, let's do this. Okay, I can now... Ooh, this is great. Can I even paste? Let's try that. Let's try some pasting. Like, I'm going to start a new style based on mm, this one for mountains. Oh. Is style mountain style. So if I want to start with the dirt color, or no, let's start with the rock color. Ah, 
Oh, you can't paste? Lame. Ah, uh, this kind of defeats the purpose. What can I even paste this one? Yeah, I think I might start using hex. I'm using RGB, yeah, mostly. What's up, Nano? <laughs> Dang, right? Oh. This is so cool though. I wish I, I wish this did work. I mean if I, I would use this if I could just paste the color. Cause I need to go I need to go back and forth. What about this? Can I paste that? Like let's say I wanna let's say I have this color. I play with it. I go to like purple or something. I take back this hex. Oh, so you can't paste there, but I think maybe you can paste here. Yeah, you can paste over here. Okay. Yep, okay, it looks like I need to just write a quick hex reader anyways. I mean, this is not hard at all. So I'll make a... I don't know, a kit from Hex or something like that. What's under fine tune? Uh, good question. Oh, just brightness, hue, saturation. Wait, what's this tables export? Oh, that's kind of cool. You can export multiple different colors. This is a really cool thing. Yeah. I think I've tried one of those and I've that used the Apple built-in UI color dialog and it just didn't yeah, it didn't even it, it was buggy, man, it was crazy. Oh, okay, so you got a JSON. This is triad, this is what? Oh, it's they call it a tetrad. Where's the complement though? Well, I mean, I guess the complement is just really easy. Oh, there you go. There's the there's the complement. Just clicking the opposite. This is super neat. Whoa. Paladin. This is really cool. So if I if I write a hex importer, anyways, I can go. Gosh, I kind of want to just make this called from X, not even kit. Be easier. Ah. Yeah, I think that is on iOS too. I think I can even use this drink stream for this. Uh, hmm.
Yeah, you're right. Um, it's it's third two L. It does specify a res, a radix. Stir two L. That's because of compiling. My X code's really slow when it's compiling and I'm streaming. Come on, show me. Show me. You know you want. What? It's not stir to L? Yeah, it is stir to L, see? Yeah, this is definitely the radix. It's 10 at the end. So we can go. Hmm. What's a, a fast way to do this? Um. Oh, S two I. Oh, I didn't know there was one like that. Uh. Nice, man. Oh, I guess I could, huh? Banging. Let's do it that way. So the decimal value going to be stir 2L mm. just thinking if the string size is less than 6 There, let's do this. Right, is it back? It looks like it's working on you over here. Uh-huh. Nice. This is the 4B version. Okay, cool. I'm glad it's back. Cool. I'm gonna copy some of it. Thanks, Steve. I like this part here. I'm just gonna go the decimal string. Because I'm not really worried about the 4B four, four version, so I'm just going to do a 3B version. So if the stir size is greater than 6, I'm going to do stir.substir1, and otherwise I'm just going to do stir.c stir. Same here, stir.substir.c stir. And I need to get that. Radix is 16. And then for each one, well, I guess we just go like this now. Let's just call this I. Do 
boop, doop, doop, dip, 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 boop, boop. Yay. What's an auto? An auto is a variable that just takes on whatever type that it infers the type. Okay, let's see if that worked. In world, we can go, let's say I want to do this um, mountain style first. What color we got here? Oh, let's get a different color for, to start with. Dirt, there we go, 255, 189, 97. There, there's my hex color for dirt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I don't know. This might be a bot. He never left up. If you're a real human, please let us know. Otherwise, we might end up banning you. <clears throat> it's a car. <laughs> nice, nice. Oh, no. I was just saying it infers the value. Auto just infers the value. So if I were to go auto i equals 1, that is now an integer. If I go auto f equals 1.0f, that's now a float. If I go auto c star equals blah, 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 that's now a c string. Const car star. You know what I mean? It's not like var. In JavaScript, there's var. So in JavaScript, you go var i equals 1. And that's a loosely typed language. It's much different. This is still strongly typed. This is C++ has always been and always pretty much will be a strongly typed language, which means that every variable has a type. It can't not ever change its type um, unless you're writing some complex class which switches types. But anyways, um, all basic built-in types, if it's an integer, it's always an integer. That's what a strongly typed language is. But in JavaScript, var can be anything. It can change its type. That's called a loosely typed language. So auto is kind of like that in the sense that you can you can set whatever auto is whatever variable type that you're inferring, but it's not at all like that because it's not a Lucy type thing. So hope that kind of makes sense. Nice, Studi Bob. Okay, let's see if that worked to just decode this color from hex. It should turn out to be just like the dirt we just pat pasted in the uh, 255, 220, 97, which is yellow, orangish yellow. Paloton, I gotta remember this. All right, so so far we have a value that's a 16 million. Um, the R should come out to be 220. Ooh, it's 255. Was that right? Man, these GLU bytes, you can't really see what number they're turning out to be.
Let's see if it matches something. Okay, let's just set another color. 189.97. Where did that come from? I don't see any 189.97. Oh, there. So I'll push back another color and we'll see if these match each other. Oh, dang. Eh. Wow, you're writing a Game Boy emulator? Dude, Game Boy Advance emulator. There we go. We go, got. Yeah, it worked. Nice, cool. So you can just use Third 2L. Good call, XPixel. Sweet. Now I can just. Oh, I can paste hex. That's so great. Okay. Cool. Okay, I'm going to do a quick little mountain style, play with some colors. And then that's going to be it for today's stream. So let's get the player to a mountainous area. That's going to be up here, like in the, maybe just to the top left. Be a good place to try. Oh. You know what, XPixel? That would work too. I guess I'll write both versions because I want to use strings in my data format. So I'm actually going to create all of this is no, not just going to be code. This is actually going to be in a, a data file and then I'll actually be reading, you know, strings and converting to hex. But for now I can just do, you know what? No, I shouldn't even do, I shouldn't even do the, um, the OX version because I know eventually I'm going to be loading this from a string and this, this happens way early in the game too like this is not ever going to be in a tight loop so it doesn't matter whether it's a string or or whatever but it's a good it's a good point right if i weren't if i weren't loading this from data i would do it that way the other day i had sort of like a chocolatey brown almost texture for the for the mountains. They look pretty good. Yeah. Good call on that string, just converting the whole thing to hex, first of all. Okay, here we are. We're in the mountains. It's got sort of a green rocks for now. Let's turn those into brown rocks. Oh, that's the dirt. One fifty three, one fifty, one thirty. This just gives me a value, it's about right. Wait a minute, these should be brown. Hmm. Yeah, I'll, I'll get to that. Thanks. Thanks, Gas. What's up, Wistaso? Nice, right on. Oh, oh, no dice. Damn. What? Even changing, I don't know if I'm even in the right area. This can't be the right area. Okay. 
Got to do a breakpoint here. How often I do this little pattern right here. I wish I could do an edit breakpoint and just set a conditional breakpoint here, but I've found that conditional breakpoints are really slow. So you can only use them in really outside loops. Oh, it's, it is using this. So why, why did plants, oh, I pushed back two dirt colors. Duh. Okay, now we got that, that should work. Let's go to where I set that breakpoint, delete it. Okay. Sweet. Hmm, cool. Yeah, I guess I guess it actually is kind of faster to do that. I mean, not if you had to recompile, but yeah. Yeah. So I've found that I found that writing some useless things um, actually doesn't work. Like if I just did if I did, if I tried to do a breakpoint like this by creating an empty statement, like just naming a variable, sometimes if I set a breakpoint here, sometimes the com the debugger will stop there, but sometimes it won't. And I think it's because sometimes it's optimizing that out. It's like, oh, you just did an empty operation. You're not using that result, so it doesn't actually create any code there, so it can't actually break. So sometimes you do have to write some actual something there, and I found that log. Creating a log statement works every time, so I just do that. Okay, um, all right, so I wanna see the colors. Create a simple color scheme for the mountains. I want these mountains to be more gray, I'm thinking. So maybe more like a grayish sand or dirt color. Yeah, those mountains actually are all right. Hey, what's up, Lith? Go, man. It's going good, man. Yeah, there's not going to be grass either. It's just going to be some um, some darker dirt. It's going good, man. Yeah, sorry, I'm just about to shut the stream down for today, but uh, I'll be back again tomorrow. Okay, so yeah, that's a little too gray ground, but maybe this would work for the for the grass. Hmm. Yeah, no, that doesn't really work for the for grass or for any kind of like this whatever that is moss or whatever. Okay, I like this this dirt. Actually, I'm gonna try this dirt a little more, just with a little bit of desaturation. Maybe 50. 
And then the grass color with a little bit less brightness. Nice. Thanks, man. Yeah, it's just a shader. Hmm. I mean, I guess that could work. Something like this. Yeah, so yeah, I think I'm just going to play with this a little bit more and um, yeah, I guess I just need to play with it a lot more. But yeah, so that's it for today's stream. Got to get going, got to get some dinner. Thanks, Smiths. So yeah, cheers, you guys. Um, if anybody's just turned tuning in, this game's called Songbringer. It's coming out in about January to March. It's like Zelda 1, but it's procedurally generated. It generates a whole world based on six letters when you start the game. Um, and that's it. So cheers. I'll be back again tomorrow. I stream pretty much every day around 4 p.m. Pacific time, sometimes earlier, sometimes later. So that's it, and thanks again, and we'll see you guys later.